welcome along to the E30 Engineering YouTube channel and this is a new channel sort of branching off from my other work which is the E39 M5 how-to guides. Today we're going to be looking at fitting a digital tachometer to your lathe. Here is the digital tachometer in question and this is what we're going to be fitting so it's a six quid piece off eBay blue LED display it measures speeds from 10 to 9999 RPM which is more than adequate for what we need. So it comes with a Hall effect sensor, a magnet, this didn't come with it, this is a piece of billet I turned up earlier which will go into the end of the headstock spindle and allow me to mount the magnet inside it. This also doubles up as a swarf plug, so when I'm turning hollow tube, none of the swarf ends up going back down the spindle and into the gear head. First thing we'll need to do is to find a suitable location to mount our display. This is quite a universal one, so you can make up a piece of aluminium sheeting and mount it anywhere, or mount it away from the machine if you so wish. I'm going to mount this one inside the gear end case. So this is a plastic end case so I will use a jigsaw to cut out a slot then it will slot in there just nicely then I've got instant access to seeing the spindle speeds. The spindle plug fits in there. Got a slight taper on it and with a small tap of a nylon mallet fits home nicely and the magnet will be mounted in here there will be a mounting bracket on the inside of the housing for the Hall effect sensor then all the wiring will be nice and neat running up the back and using the 12 volt supply that's for the work lamp if you need to machine yourself up a spindle plug then it's easy to do pop a M8 thread inside it at the end then you can put in an M8 bolt to give you a bit of leverage just to pop it out if you need to and to put our magnet in we're going to put this in the forge or chuck we don't need to dial it up as dead centre as long as we've central to somewhere on the side of the body then we can mount our magnet inside it and then we'll just drill a small hole to mount as magnet. Once you've got your spindle plugs chucked up in your forge jaw and you've marked the central point and you're happy with it then you can put a centre drill in and then you can drill out to your desired diameter for your magnet. So my magnet is 12mm so I'm using a 11.5mm titanium drill with built-in centre drill. So I'm going to drill out to a depth of around about 3mm. Now the piece has been drilled to 11.5mm. We checked it with the caliper and it's 11.62. We can then use our boring attachment on our tool post to bore out the hole to the diameter we need so the magnet is 12 mil on the nose so I'm going to bore this out to 11.94 then put a slight chamfer on it as well then the magnet will go in as an interference fit with a dollop of super glue as well for extra, extra rigidity and then that will be our Hall effect sensor pickup wheel in effect ready for popping back into the end of a spindle and mounting the sensor at the next stage then once you've finished and you've popped your magnet in this is what it should look like so as this rotates the Hall effect sensor will pick up the magnets on each revolution transmit that information back to the tachometer gauge then that will give you a digital readout of spindle speed in revolutions per minute once you've decided on where you're mounting your gauge then scribe up 
the dimensions of your gauge then you'll be able to pop a little drill hole in each corner then use a jigsaw with a fine blade to just cut out the square then you'll need to file a little wing on each side that will allow the locating tabs just to pop in place once you've cut out your hole for the display and mounted your taco pickup or hole sensor as the proper name for it is then check that once your cover's shut the hole sensor is the specified distance from the rotating magnet as per the instructions in whichever system you use this one the clearance is between 2 and 10 millimeters so I've set it to 3 millimeters and if there's any interference issues I'll be able to adjust it from there I've used a piece of 2 millimeter aluminium for the mounting bracket with a couple of M6 machine screws reason for using aluminium is it's flexible enough to give you that fine amount of adjustment once it's in by twisting and bending slightly but it's also rigid enough to withstand any vibrations as well once you've got your display mounted and the hole sensor mounted as well and the spindle end bung with a magnet then you can do a little bit of wiring that you need to do so I've run mine inside as per this spray with a bit of electrical cleaner and a wipe down to get rid of any grease or oil that's splattered on the inside of a case end a couple of cable tie clips with adhesive backs on in place then run your wire out to where you can get your 12 volt supply from now you can either use an additional transformer or I'm going to use the 12 volt supply which is for the work lamp once you've completed all your wiring and be able to turn your machine on and check that the gauge powers up turn the chuck by hand to allow the magnet to rotate past the hole sensor then that'll check that if it's working incidentally the magnet make sure that you get the north and south pole correct orientation as the hole sensor will only work by picking up one or the other the instruction manual doesn't tell you this so you'll just have to try before you skew your magnet in place and once you're happy that it does work you'll be able to turn your lathe on start the chuck and then be happy that your machine is now able to tell you the exact reading of the chuck speed so without putting this into back gear I've currently got it set up so that the lowest speeds 180 185 rpm then that's infinitely variable with a digital inverter all the way up to the maximum rpm which is around about 1400 rpm for this machine so thank you for watching and i hope that this video has been of some use for you if you want to see more videos drop us a comment like this video and subscribe to my channel for other things that are coming up through e30 engineering and also my bmw how-to guides so hopefully you'll be back for more and thank you for watching